One interesting application of the ellipse are planetary orbits, or the orbit of a moon around a planet, or the orbit of a spacefaring vessel around a moon or a planet or a sun or anything else. Um, Kepler's laws, named for Johannes Kepler, are the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci. So if we were to imagine Earth's orbit around our sun, the path Earth takes is elliptical in shape, and the sun, not at the center, but at one of the two foci. And so as Earth orbits the sun, it moves in that elliptical way. And so let's see, there's a little planet Earth. All right, so we're moving around our sun as an ellipse. All right, Kepler's other two laws here, a line segment joining the planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. The square of the orbital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. Um, those are things you might encounter in a physics class. For us right now, we're really just curious about this elliptical orbit. So here's a little information about the Earth's orbit. Earth's orbit has an eccentricity of 0 0.017. Well, remember, eccentricities are numbers between 0 and 1. The closer we get to 0, the more round, the more circular the ellipse is. So this is telling me that Earth's orbit is really close to being a circle. So I've kind of exaggerated it over here. The semi-major axis of Earth's orbit is 92.96 million miles. All right, well, semi-major axis, that is the thing we call A. And now I know that that distance is 92.96 million miles. So if I think about Earth's orbit as having a horizontal major axis, the length from the center to that vertex, that's the value of A. That's the semi-major axis. The major axis would run all the way across. The semi-major axis only runs half the distance. All right, we're asked to find an equation that models the Earth's orbit around the sun. We're asked to find the maximum distance between the Earth and the sun, and then the shortest distance between the Earth and the sun. Well, the equation is already starting to take shape. I'm going to think about this as having a center at the origin, because there's no reason not to, and I'll make all of my other calculations easier. And I know what A is, 92.96 million miles. So now I just need to find out what B squared is, and I'll have this relationship. And so I need to use the eccentricity. And I remember the, the eccentricity is C over A. All right, so if I plug in what I know, the eccentricity is 0 0.017. I don't know C, but I do know a value for A. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, you're looking for B squared, and this is going to help you find C. But then what I'm secretly thinking about is if I know C and A, I'll be able to find B squared. So get out our trusty TI-83, 0 0.017 times 92.96. C is equal to 1.58032. And I'm gonna write everything out, right? Cause I'll round at the end and I don't wanna compound any errors. And you know, I hope you've noticed, but I'm just using the 92.96. I'm gonna let X and Y be in millions of miles. So X and Y in millions of miles. Gonna make the numbers way easier to deal with here, but it makes it important to carry out as much information as I can here in the middle of the problem. All right, now we need to find B squared. So C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So I have 1.5 8032 squared is equal to 92.96 squared minus b squared. So b squared is, well, that 92.96 squared minus 1.58032, that value of c. All right, so 92.96 squared minus that thing I just got squared. B squared is 
8639.064189. And a lot of the times when I do things like this, I just write that number there, but I kind of want this equation to look like this, like that 92.96 squared. So I'm gonna give myself some room to write down the value of B under here being squared. So I'm gonna go on and take that square root and tell you that B is approximately 92.947. And I didn't leave myself enough room and I should have known that was gonna happen. So let's just write down our final answer on that next little bit of board x squared over 92.96 squared, that value of a, plus y squared over the value we just wrote down for b. And I'm rounding to one more decimal place there just to indicate that it did go a little more precisely than that. And I, here I have the equation of Earth's orbit, 92.96 squared on the bottom of the x squared, 92.947. All right, well remember, Earth's orbit's nearly round. And so there's not a big difference between A and B. Well, relatively, there's not a big difference. These are in millions of miles. But, all right, there's our equation for Earth's orbit. And now we're asked to try to figure out the furthest distance Earth is from the sun and the smallest distance Earth is from the sun. All right, so... We have values for A, which is 92.96 million miles, B, which is 92.947 million miles, and C, which is 1.58032 million miles. Looking at our diagram, the furthest Earth is from its sun would be over here at this vertex. And so if we think about the sun being at a focus, that total distance from the sun over to that vertex would be A plus C. So the maximum distance Earth is from the sun is just going to be A plus C, 92.96 plus 1.58032, 94 94.5 million miles. And then the shortest distance I would see is over here at the other vertex. And so from the center out to the vertex is A, and I'm looking for this distance, so that one's gonna be A minus C. 92.96 minus 1.58032. All right, typed one thing wrong. All right, 91.4 million miles. The furthest Earth ever is away from the sun is 94.5 million miles, and the closest is 91.4 million miles. And there we have it. We've modeled Earth's orbit with an ellipse, and we've been able to find the largest distance between the Earth and the sun and the shortest distance between the Earth and the sun.